Hello, I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. Today we're going to be dealing with spiritual warfare. And I tell you what, it, there's a mighty work to be done before the Lord comes uh, and gets us all to go home. And so he, there's, we need to all be willing to work for Him, male and female. And we'll talk about that in just a minute after this short break. I'll be right back. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Her beautiful Holy voice Spirit, is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer to The Anointing Every song makes you feel in His presence. Best Loved Hits, Hidden Classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom, CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Genie Caldwell are sold. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real life encounters with God. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Welcome back. Well, we're going to be talking about dealing with spiritual warfare. And as I said, uh, there's a mighty work to be done before Jesus can come and take his bride away. So therefore, male and female, we need to join uh, hands together and absolutely do all we can for the, the kingdom of God. You know, we can, we can get them saved, but then keeping them free from the things of this world is another thing, and they have to be taught the truth. Teaching them to stay free and walk in their inheritance is what they have to know, because I'm telling you what, it will set them free. I read one time a survey that said that 99% uh, of all Christians uh, do not consistently resist the devil, one half occasionally, the other half not at all, Consequently, statistics say that 50% of people born again backslide within the first year. Whew, friends, that should not be. And that's the reason I want to share with you some things today, that there's spiritual warfare out there. You need to know it, and you need to know how to deal with it in Jesus' name on a daily basis, too. Now, trouble is all around us. Sin is rampant. There are many challenges out there that we have to walk through and deal with it, but the devil knows his time is short, and so we all are experiencing spiritual warfare as never before. And um, so we must learn how to take our stand as a believer and live in total victory in every area of our life. We are winners. We are overcomers. And we overcome evil with good. That's what the Bible says. We overcome it. And as I was saying uh, in my last session, Happy's been teaching on how to overcome. And I think he calls it the overcomer service. 
on Wednesday nights from 7 to 8. It's only an hour service. Very interesting, very important. He's been doing it now for probably a couple of months. So uh, he may not be teaching it by the time, you know, you watch this. I, th I don't know. I think he will be, but then I'm not God. <laughs> I'm not the Holy Ghost. But anyway, it, it's good. It's how to overcome. And you overcome evil with good. Now, now is the time not to be a soft Christian or a nonchalant about our a walk with God. We need to be serious about those things. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 10, 25, and it said, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and, and so the, much the more as we see the day approaching. Now, what day is he saying? He's talking about when the Lord is going to come back and get us. And when we see it's in the future, very soon, uh, we need to exhort one another in love to stay in touch with God. When, don't forsake your assembly, the assembling of yourselves together. We need one another. You need me and I need you. And together, uh, we can do it. And we need to exhort one another to stay in the Word and to stay with the, the people that you go to church with. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and much the more as you see the day approaching. And you know, we do see signs all around us all the time. Jesus is coming soon for his bride. And have you ever thought we, we say that, but if that be true, then the Antichrist uh, would be alive today and to come on the scene with full power like he's going to do. I mean, that's something to think about too. I mean, I believe in the Antichrist. The Word says there's one and he's absolutely out there. So we want to make sure that we keep in tune with God. So our life is either going to count for God or we're going to be sidetracked through the wiles of the devil. Now, we've said before that wiles are the tricks and deceit of the devil. All right, there are the spiritual warfare I'm talking about is on uh, three fronts. And it's the world, number one, the flesh, number two, and the devil, number three. So that's the world, the flesh, and the devil, those three fronts. Now, let's define world according to the word. In the New Testament, uh, world is, is used in the sense of planet Earth. It's a planet and it's Earth. The material planted. Now let's go to Acts, back a few chapters, to Acts 17.24. Acts 17.24. Okay. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So we see here that the Lord that made heaven, the, said, said God made, let me start all over. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he's Lord of heaven and earth. Uh, so world is used also meaning the inhabitants of the world. And who's, who's the inhabitants? We are, flesh and blood. He's got the planet there that he created, but he also created the moon and the sun and all the other planets that we know about. The earth is a, a planet. We know that, uh, so the world is used also to mean the inhabitants of the earth. And then John three sixteen. I don't know about you, but we had to quote that all the time. It says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. And so he, Jesus was willing to come. Praise be to God. I am thankful for that. And then thirdly, the world has uh, been beautifully created and organized for us to live in. <laughs> it's such a beautiful place. I mean, all you got to do is just leave where you live. If that's, you know, if you only have left, uh, if you've never left Arkansas, there's a world of beauty out there. Of course, Arkansas has got its own beauty, but there's so much beauty out there in, these, in, these, uh, in this world. It has everything we need, 
or whatever want, everything we need or want. These things are not evil in themselves. However, Satan has woven them into his world order that can take a man's heart away from a true relationship with God and center man on things and, uh, that are temporal and material. And we see that so, so much. First Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it. It's not money. He wants us to have money and be prosperous, but it's when you love it. It's when you love that money that it's the root of all evil. And God, uh, you know, even though He wants you to be prosperous, He didn't want you to focus in on money and on material things. So, because they're temporary. They're temporary. Now, number two is the flesh. That's the world. Now, this one's the flesh. The flesh is one area where Satan constantly hinders us from doing what God wants us to do. He absolutely does. Now, in the New Testament, flesh uh, sometimes means the, the skin that covers uh, our, our bones. And let's go to Luke uh, 24, 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that is, I myself, Je this is Jesus talking, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. So we see that he's saying here, see my hands and my feet, as, uh, as I myself, touch, and, touch me and see. And uh, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. Sometimes flesh is used in the sense of a physical, earthly limitation. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we see that we're walking in the flesh, but we don't war after it. You just don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty, capable of doing anything through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we can see for God to pull down strongholds, we need to trust Him, believe in Him, and apply His power in the name of Jesus. But the flesh we're talking about today, uh, where uh, spiritual warfare comes in, we find Paul talks about the flesh a lot. I mean, he really does. He says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh can be a willing instrument of sin. A study on the passage of, uh, passages of flesh reveals the following facts. One, it is a basic nature which operates within us when we are born physically. When you're born into this earth physically, then you, you've got your basic nature. Now, this nature is self-centered and wants its own way. <laughs> so, let's go to Romans 12, I mean Romans uh, 7, 14 through 24. Romans 7. 14 through 24. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in, my, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that which that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law 
that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, spirit. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I tell you what, if you know Jesus Christ, he can absolutely take you and make you a new creation. He can and he will if you want him to. So, it is an inseparable part of our physical body and cannot be eradicated or do away with it until we receive our transformed, resurrected body, bodies when we go to heaven. That'll be wonderful, won't it? We won't have this flesh and blood to deal with. Though it cannot be eradicated or done away with, its power to operate in our life has been neutralized when we're born again. I think that's so wonderful to even know that. The flesh has no right to reign in a Christian's life any longer. Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. So therefore, we can walk in victory and our flesh uh, will, will not win. It will not win if we will it to not win. Hallelujah. Now, here's a list of some deeds of the flesh which God does not want us involved in. This is the things of the body. Go to Galatians 5. I've read this many, many times because I tell you what, it got my attention when um, I was learning to listen to the Spirit when He was trying to correct me and deal with me. But in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it said, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's people that are actually under the bondage of their flesh. And, that's, and those things are the, what the flesh do, and God does not want us doing it. So, we can walk in victory over our flesh if we will to. And I remember when I was studying the Word, and, uh, and I study it all the time, uh, and I saw some of those things, and I thought, Lord have mercy, he's got adultery, or witchcraft, and hatred along with strife. And I thought, I got some strife in my life. And so I started thinking about where I had strife. And I mean, I would, I'd face up to it and I'd repent of it. I don't want strife in my life if he didn't want me to have it. And so I got rid of it. I absolutely got rid of it. And that's what you need to do too. Whatever it is that you are in bondage to, get rid of it and repent. Now, when Paul said those things, uh, who do or practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, now, that means those that habitually indulge in these things, in sin. It, re it shows that they have not received a new nature because if, you have, if you're doing these things and you've got a new nature, you don't hate sin. I'm telling you, you don't. A Christian could not regularly practice sin because the Holy Spirit dwells inside them. And he would be miserable and they would be miserable. So they should repent and get delivered. At least do your best to, to go through and read those things and not get in bondage to it, but begin to repent of the things that you know that you need to be set free from. So get that new nature going in you. Number three, it's the devil. You know, in the beginning of the uh, world, in the beginning uh, in Genesis, man gave the title deed of the world over to Satan. And since that time, the world 
has been under his control. And Satan is the god of this world. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and read that. Uh, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So Satan is the God of this world. I mean, he is. But now he's not the God of my world or your world if you're born again. But if you aren't born again, he is, the, he is your God. <laughs> and that's awful. That's an awful thing to say, but it's the truth. That's what the Word says. And he will deceive you. He'll blind your mind so that you will not believe. He's also called uh, the prince of the power of the air. Uh, go over to Ephesians 2.2. 2. Uh, Ephesians 2.2. 2. Um, let me see, Ephesians 2, verse 2. My poor Bible is so torn up. <laughs> but don't give me one. I've got, I've got pipe Bibles. This just happens to be one of my favorite ones. But at any rate, it said, <clears throat> Wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. A child that is not born again, their father, they're walking according to the prince of the power of the air. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so we need to really watch out for that because we, we don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be walking according to his plan. I want to walk according to God's plan. So, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We see that Satan is said to be the prince and power behind the atmosphere of the thoughts of this world that's hostile to God. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis 6, 5. Right in the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Wow. You know, that's sad. So we see see Satan's uh, thoughts in the education system the media, and false religions. Uh, And by the way, Satan loves religion where he can really blind the minds there, because he does. There's so many different religions where Jesus Christ is not the Lord, and he's not the Lord of your life. And the Bible says that that's the only way you're going to go to heaven is if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you have to be born again, born out of this world into his kingdom. So you really need to know that. So Satan loves religion. And if you love, uh, if you have another religion other than Jesus Christ, you're ultimately deceived. And uh, Jesus, it says, is the way to God. But praise God, 1 John 5, 4 tells us, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You overcome the world system. So we must, we must renew our minds with the Word and our thoughts to the Word of God. Always follow Jesus and His ways or else we will go back to our old ways. And I think that's why a lot of people go back to their old ways as I gave you those statistics that I've studied years ago about the people that don't know how to uh, resist the devil. But you need to know that he's out there. There's a spiritual warfare going on and you need to learn to resist the devil every day in your thoughts. If not, you'll go back to your old ways. Genesis, I mean, James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him and he'll flee. That's what James 4, 7 said. 
And Ephesians uh, 6.10 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles of the devil, which is the tricks and, and deceit. That's what his wiles are. So you put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against him. And when you've done all to stand, you do what? You stand. You just keep standing. You stand. Now, there is a mighty revival coming, and God wants to use you as well as me. He wants to use all of us, all of his children. And you're probably thinking, use me? How could he use me? Spend time in prayer and let him reveal his plan to you. He will give you ideas. He will give you thoughts. So just move out on them. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare or a trap. So we must want to please God rather than man. Ask God to help you. I know in Matthew 5, 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, which means blessed are those who are not ignorant and are not proud. Those who are humble and willing to say, I need help. Proud people do not pray. I'm going to say that again. Proud people do not pray. Those who are humble and are willing to admit they need help from God, they're humble and they're teachable people. There are people who will not be flippant or nonchalant about the sin in their life. If they sin, it will break their heart, and they will repent quickly and get back right with God. Remember that those who are determined to obey, obey God will obey God and will receive persecution from their family and friends, co-workers, but Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And I believe that you will be. Just understand that the devil is out there and he is going to remain out there until we're caught up to be with the Father forevermore. And, and your race is, you have run your race, but it means that you're going to have to have God's grace to do it. For things that need to be added to you will be added. In Jesus' name. Well, I want you to remember that in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 22007, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email her at JeannieCaldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet in His presence.